Gilmore Girls follows the lives of Rory and Lorelai Gilmore, who are honestly a iconic and dynamic mother-daughter duo. When we meet Rory at the beginning of the series, she's a 16-year-old girl who is super sweet, a little bit shy, extremely studious, and she has her eyes set on Harvard and nothing can get in the way of that. One of her two best friends is her mother, Lorelai Gilmore, who had Rory when she was just 16 herself. She's super chill, very eccentric, and her wittiness is pure gold. It honestly is one of the things that makes the series. I figured if there's anybody I would want to emulate, it would be the original reading girly herself. I am going to be reading like Rory Gilmore for a week. Okay, good morning, you guys. I am obviously in a robe, and that is because not only are we gonna be reading like Rory Gilmore in this video, we're also gonna be dressing like Rory Gilmore. Now, I have been watching Gilmore Girls since my literal junior year of high school, and I'm 24 now. So to say that I'm a huge Gilmore Girls fan is kind of an understatement. I do have a general idea of what Rory wears, but I decided to do a little research because I wanted to kind of like see what kinds of outfits were repeated throughout the show. She wears a lot of skirts and tights, a lot of sweaters, and yeah, she has like this really like preppy college student slash New Englandy type of style, which is not really my type of style and I don't have too much stuff that fit that mold, but I do have a few pieces in my closet that I can put together and make work. I just feel like if we're gonna be reading like Rory, we gotta channel Rory down to her outfits. I'm gonna go into my closet, I'm gonna go change, and I'm gonna show you guys the first fit and we can go ahead and get started on reading. So this is the first fit. I put on a black turtleneck and a little jumper skirt. Now that we're in our first Rory fit, let's go ahead and get a cup of coffee because you know that is an essential item for a Gilmore girl. Let's go. This is weird because I usually don't film standing up and I feel like I'm like half of a body. But anyway, we have our coffee and of course it is in a Luke's mug. It's so funny because I literally just have this mug. Like you guys have probably seen this in prior videos. To be a Gilmore girl, you have to have a codependency on coffee. I have to say that is one of the ways in which I can relate to the Gilmore girls. Like I actually have a codependency on coffee and I'm not giving it up anytime soon. We also have the two books that we're gonna read for this video. So basically what I did was I got online. There are tons of lists of books that Rory has read. It's called the Rory Gilmore Reading Challenge. Some of the lists just have books that are mentioned or movie titles that are mentioned in the show, but not books that Rory has actually read. So I was able to find a very, very narrow down list that lists the books that Rory has actually read. So that led me to pick these two books, To Kill a Mockingbird and The Catcher in the Rye. To Kill a Mockingbird I read like in the eighth grade, which was a long time ago. The Catcher in the Rye was supposed to read it in high school, I don't think I ever finished this book. I actually put up a poll on the community page and I asked you guys which one I should read first. Coming in at a whopping 71% To Kill a Mockingbird one and at 29% was The Catcher in the Rye. So you guys didn't even know, but you guys helped me decide which book to start first. Also decided that I'm gonna be annotating these books because they're classics and I feel like they're referenced a lot even in pop culture today. So I wanted to do some annotating. So that is my plan. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started reading. The whole town knows you did it. They had a meeting about it. You actually went to that bizarro town meeting? Yeah, those things are so, to kill a mockingbird. Check. I don't know, do you guys think this is it? I tried to get as close to a little sweater combo, but I don't really have those types of sweaters. Like, this is open in the back, but we can just pretend. Day two. 
it is quite literally only a matter of time before I have a heat stroke in all of these layers. Um, yeah, To Kill a Mockingbird, started reading it yesterday and I've been annotating it as I said I would. I'm gonna quickly give you guys the breakdown of these colors. Dark green is any important explanations or descriptions of people or places or things. The light pink is just to denote like a significant plot point or like a significant change is happening and like the story is now going in a different direction. This beautiful, beautiful reddish color is just for quotes that I really love. Any quotes that are inspirational or important to me. And so far I'm on chapter six, which is page 56. I think the kids in this story are literally hilarious. I know or I expect that the tone of this book is gonna like pick up into something more serious, but for right now, we're just kind of like hanging out with the kids, hanging out with Jem, Gao, and hanging out with Dill, and they're freaking hilarious. They're literally like adults in little kid bodies. Scout is such like a spitfire. I love her. I am definitely excited to get into the meat of this story. They're really just like trying to figure out what is up with this Boo Radley guy. I'm telling you for the last time, shut your trap or go home. I declare to the Lord you're getting more like a girl every day. This is a jumbo coffee morning. I need coffee and an IV. Several hours later, I have changed in everything, like, got sweats on. Finished To Kill a Mockingbird, um, thoroughly and completely annotated it. She is rife with annotations, and I added the little key in the beginning as well. I'm not gonna spoil it because I, I'm sure there's still people who have not read this. This was truly an amazing read and I'm really happy that I annotated it because I can easily go back and look at things. It's a very serious story, but the one thing that I do love about it is it's told from the perspective of kids. So the tone is light in those aspects, just the way that they process the world and like the events happening around them. So now I have to read To Kill a Mock. I mean, what is it? I just read that. So now I get to read The Catcher in the Rye, and I'm very interested to see what I'm gonna think about that one. Also, tomorrow I have jury duty, which I've never had jury duty before. I'm gonna bring The Catcher in the Rye with me just in case there's some downtime and I can read. All he does is stick up for you, and all you do is make his life harder. I guess that's what you have to do when you're trying to be holding Caulfield, but I think it stinks. This is my worry for today. I think I told you guys last night, but I had jury duty today. I got dressed up, um, you know, went. I literally packed so much, guys. Like, this was my bag. I got there, sipping on my coffee, looking like a real adult, you know, just waiting to go inside. And they told me, you guys can go home. <laughs> We don't need you. We have met our quota, we have enough. I started on The Catcher in the Rye and I'm on page 38 of it. And yeah, I will give you guys my thoughts in a little bit, but <sighs> how has your morning been? I'd love to know guys, how has your morning been? Hopefully it's been great. finished The Catcher in the Rye. Early this morning, I woke up really early and I went ahead and I finished it. I have really mixed feelings about this and I also didn't do too many annotations as you can see. There weren't that many profound things or like big changes, but one thing that I will say is that Holden really, he really drops some pretty important things that happen in his life 
in the most passive way. And it's always truly shocking, but it also helps you to understand him and understand why he is the way that he is. There's obviously some very, very serious psychological trauma that he's suffering from. Honestly, I felt bad for him a lot of the time. So I'm glad that I finally got to finish this because I never did remember what happened in this book. I don't think I ever finished it. So it's nice to have that completion. So guys, we have read two classics this week, two books that Rory Gilmore reads, and they were pretty decent. I gave To Kill a Mockingbird a five star rating and I gave The Catcher in the Rye like a four star rating. I also did put up a review for To Kill a Mockingbird on Goodreads so you can go check that out if you want. That is the end of today's video. Thank you guys for coming along and reading like Rory Gilmore with me. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for watching. If you are a regular and you see me every Friday, thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, you should definitely subscribe. Like this video if you really loved it and I will be seeing you guys in the next video. You guys should definitely stick around. February is going to be all about romance and I'm really excited to read some romance books. I'll see you guys in the next video. When you're not here, the sun don't shine. When you're not near, I don't feel like I do when you're with me. It felt like sudden.